Hello and welcome back class. Uh, I want to take a few minutes to give you a very, very brief introduction to philosophy. <clears throat> this will correspond with your learning unit on Greek history. I'm going to give you some selections, uh, primarily from Plato, uh, which you will see I also have a video there posted on Plato to give you more background uh, just to Plato himself. Uh, but I just want to give you a brief introduction to philosophy, especially um, sort of within the context of ancient Greek philosophy, philosophy uh, arising in ancient Greece, uh, one of the primary traditions, one of the primary reasons why ancient Greece is so important is because philosophy begins in ancient Greece. Uh, it begins with the Greek philosopher Thales, who was the first person uh, in Greece at the time uh, to successfully predict a solar eclipse. And what made this prediction so significant, the reason why Thales stuck out to so many people, uh, is because of how he did it. And the reasons he gave for the solar eclipse. Uh, up until this time, uh, most of what we think of as astronomy, uh, the study of the stars, uh, wasn't a science yet. Um, the study of the stars was intimately linked with the study of religion, with the study of the gods. To study the stars was to study the gods. And ancient people, including the ancient Greeks, uh, view the heavens as just that, as the dwelling place of the gods, as the sort of perfect realm, this perfect uh, place of existence. The heavenly bodies moved in perfect circles around a perfectly circular earth. All the bodies were perfectly circular. Um, but Thales brought a non-religious approach to the study of astronomy. And eventually Thales will branch out uh, further than astronomy and come up with explanations for uh, how he the, believes the earth was created, uh, where he believes life came from. A lot of these, as a sidebar, a lot of these pre-Socratic philosophers, we don't really have a whole lot of their writing. We don't have any sort of comprehensive collection of their writing. Uh, but they seem very much concerned with cosmology, with uh, how the universe is formed, how the earth was formed. So Thales is writing about all of these things, not from any sort of religious perspective, uh, but from a rational perspective, through the use of his reason, through the use of observation. And what Thales is going to develop is philosophy, is the first comprehensive philosophical system. So from the get-go, we have a basic distinction between philosophy on the one hand and religion on the other hand. Religious explanations aren't going to satisfy philosophers. That's not to say that these early philosophers are going to be like atheist or anti-religious. Uh, we don't really get that until modern history. Um, but the sort of what counts as a good explanation is going to change. And for philosophy, philosophy uh, we can kind of simply define as a search for a fundamental understanding of the world around us through the process of critical thinking and critical discussion. So this rational approach to understanding and to explaining reality through the use of reason through our own intellect and relying on nothing but our own intellect and how our thoughts and how our ideas, how we're able to formulate them, how we're able to say them, and how other people critique them. So through critical thinking and through critical discussion, philosophy is a dialogue. Philosophy is something that is that we're meant to bounce off of each other. I have an idea, I throw it out there, you critique that idea. It's not like an argument, it's not like a heated political debate when we're, when we're yelling at each other, uh, but we're in conversation, we're in dialogue with each other in order to get to the truth, in order to find what is true, in order to grasp uh, the, the truth that is, is, is somewhere out there. Um, now, uh, you're going to be reading selections primarily from Plato, and uh, Plato, the, the three big Greek philosophers, uh, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Uh, Plato was the student of Socrates, Aristotle's the student of Plato. Um, 
they really shape and define philosophy. Plato's going to shift philosophy from focusing on cosmology. Plato's going to focus, and Socrates are going to focus primarily on ethics, uh, questions pertaining to how we should live our lives, how we should conduct ourselves. Uh, but they're going to apply the same sort of rigor, the same sort of questioning. Ethics in philosophy is not just a, a matter of opinion. It's not just uh, based on the whelm of the individual. Uh, you have to have reasons for why you behave how you behave. It's, it's, ideally, you're supposed to have uh, some sort of support, some sort of uh, justification. Now, Plato is going to rely heavily on the use of metaphor. He's going to rely heavily on the use of myth. Uh, but these metaphors and myths are going to serve the purpose at getting at reality, at explaining reality. And this is really the purpose of philosophy, to provide rational explanations for whatever it is that we're talking about, whatever it is that we're studying, whether it's logic, uh, whether it's morality, whether it's ethics, whether it's right or what's wrong, whether it's cosmology, whether it's astronomy, whether it's physics, doesn't matter. Uh, back then there wasn't a division between the different sciences. There wasn't a division. It was all just included uh, under the general umbrella of philosophy. So um, whatever selection from Plato that I'm going to have you read, notice that there might be some... Uh, a lot of analogy, uh, analogies, analogies or metaphors used, but uh, these are always used in pursuit of truth. Okay, so it's a very brief primer on what philosophy is and how it developed in ancient Greece. Uh, if you want to check out the Plato video, uh, that'll give you a little more context into the thinking of Plato himself and maybe make a little more sense of the reading. All right, class, see you next time.